Today on Larry King Now, the legendary James Kahn. The Godfather established you. A Jewish kid with all those Italian Shh, guys. Don't say that, because I'm going to make money being Italian. But now you just spoiled it. <laughs> you just cost me a bundle. So it's good to be Jewish. In the ass, You're in the but... right city. <laughs> I still get the best tables when I walk in. People are afraid to say anything to me. They say, watch out, you're going to wind up in the East River. So it's, it's a good... Plus... Bullshit. Can you say bullshit? Oh, you yeah. Can. yeah. Bull 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 okay. I love it. And his newest co-star, Maggie Lawson. He's so full of crap. Listen, I know him. <laughs> Trust me. All today on Larry King Now. I feel like I'm home because my kids grew up playing baseball here. They graduated from the little leagues and went to the juniors. But when Beverly Hills we're on the set of ABC's new sitcom, Back in the Game, and I'm with the star of the show, one of Hollywood's most respected names, one of the good guys, too, James Kahn. He plays Terry, the Cannon Gannon Sr., a single dad who's welcomed his estranged daughter, Terry Jr., and her young son back into his life. Terry Jr. is played by Maggie Lawson. We'll meet her in a little while. Why did you go to tell her? You are a movie star. Yeah. You're a star. Well, here's what happened, Larry. I don't get the girl anymore, right? You know, obviously. I can't, uh, like, fight prehistoric animals with a sword, you know, giant ones. I can't jump from building to building, and I get nauseous hanging from a wire, so. <laughs> What's left? Yeah. So I did a, I, did I, I've Vegas. been doing, yeah, I did that for a little while. You didn't like that, right? I, 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 I liked it. There were some things I didn't like about it, yeah. Uh, but that was all executive stuff, but, well, then I was broke, and like hard times will make, make a monkey eat red peppers, right? So, <laughs> but I've been doing movies, and, and the truth is, they're just not making the movies that, you know, that I like to do. I mean, I've done a couple, but like, all of a sudden you're doing movies like, they asked me, what was the name of that other movie that I said, it was called The Rent. And what was the movie before that? That was also called The Rent, <laughs> you know? Well, I get a call one day from my agents, and they said, Jimmy, the Coen brothers, they wrote this, this comedy thing. I says, yeah, and they wrote it for you. They're not gonna do it unless you do it. The Coen brothers, really? Jeez, they wrote a thing. Well, I gotta read that. So I read it, it's pretty funny, but I look and it says, it's Coen brothers. It doesn't say the Coen brothers, it's the Coen brothers. <laughs> so I found out that's the way these guys make a living. They mispronounce their name. <laughs> But they're, they're good guys, and they're very, very funny. So I, I make fun of them. So I, and I met with them, and I knew them. I, I knew them both they're from Vegas and other places. And I mean, they're both belong in a home. They're great and funny. <laughs> and uh, and then I, you know, I have two young kids still. I stay at home, and I found it to be really fun and creative. It's a great cast, and uh, the show. character I, which we it's created. A great concept too. That. Yeah. Oh, he was not a good ball player, right? No, he was. He was like the second coming of Sandy Koufax, actually. He was a but great he drank, ball. Yeah, he dragged his way out of the league and blew his arm up. It sounds like me, but I, I didn't His daughter drink. was a softball star, right? She, I call her Junior because I raised her like a boy. Her mom died when she was eight, and I raised her just, you know, baseball and all these ruffians, and I was just not a great dad. And uh, she went on to college and become a an all-American softball player. And then she got married and had a kid. They split up, now the kid's 10 years old, and she hates her dad because she called her Junior. You know, I call her Junior. And uh, I mean, to the point where she goes, uh, I said, what are you talking about? She said, well, when I had my first period, you told me to walk it off, you know? It was like, <laughs> <laughs> so everything was funny. So she was raised that way. And then she's forced to live with me now with the kid because there's nowhere else. And uh, I'm playing a pretty horrifying kind of person which you how, know is probably easy for me, right? How does a horrifying kind of person keep up as the head of a weekly sitcom? Well, what, I mean... What it, motivates... Do I, do I sort of... It's like Archie... Do I sort of like him? Yeah, you, you, you wind up... Uh, like, I mean, it's not like... It's not that he's angry. He's, like, impatient. He hasn't got time. You know, he's not... And when he, he, when he feels something that's apologetically or, or, or lovingly... It's a sign of weakness to him, so he does it privately and quietly. He doesn't know how to express himself. Well, he does, but it's, it's kind of like a what sign of weakness. What kind of job does he have? 
No, he has a pension and he's a hustler. You know, he hustles golf, he plays cards. Uh, how do you view him when you play someone like that? Do you, I uh, think of you, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, what do you what do you look for? Well, the, 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 the it, what it allows me to, to do is to be very very funny along with you know with Rob and his brother Mark and his great writing staff. They're they're, they're not. They're, I'm seriously. Rob belongs. In, there are saner people walking the streets than this guy. Okay, <laughs> they're nuts. And and <clears throat> the humor is is great. So we figured out like. From anger, it doesn't there's not a lot of humor to come, and there's not a lot of room for transition from anger to be a loving. But for a guy who hasn't got time for bullshit, can you say bullshit? Oh, you yeah, sure. Yeah. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Okay. I love it. All right, you, he hasn't got time for bullshit. And it's like, uh, if you haven't got anything to say, don't bother talking to me. So there's a lot of humor that comes out of, sarcastic humor that comes out of impatience that wouldn't come out of anger. Do you know what out I'm saying? Out of baseball, too? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> this is certainly a far cry from... <laughs> The bad news bears because when I say, "Hey, I'm not doing bad news bears," okay? <laughs> no. So, you know, we see these kids that we have who—they're pretty good, right? Larry, there's not. How can I say one gene of athleticism in any one of them? They will never win. They, if they score two runs, we're going to throw a party. <laughs> so, I mean, the point is, it's not about this team getting any better <laughs> ever. They will never win in the life of this this series. But they are hysterical. These kids are like real kids that we interviewed. They're not actors, except for my, my grandson was the best, Griffin. He's in it? Not, not he plays my he grandson. Right we'll be right back with James Kahn. He stars in Back in the Game on ABC. We'll be right back. We're back with James Kahn. Do you like the images, the tough guy guy, that you, where the Godfather established you? Jewish kid with all those Italian Shh, guys. Don't say that because I'm gonna make money being Italian. But now you just spoiled. You just cost me a bundle. So it's good to be Jewish. Pain in the ass, You're in the right city. <laughs> no, do you like that tough guy image? No, I mean, but you're look, characterized that way a lot. You know? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, fortunately, Godfather was a success. You know, and and unfortunately, you know, every script I got, you know, thereafter for a few years, if there weren't 20 people dead by page 11, I didn't get the, <laughs> you know, I didn't get the script. But, um, no, I mean, I went on to sing and dance. People go, wait, they don't relate me to that. You made that great movie. For the boys? With, with Bette that? Medler. Yeah. Oh, what a movie. That could have been a better movie. movie. That yeah. should have been... No, that it could have been a better movie. It was a good they, movie. They, they fuck-cocked it a little bit, but yeah, it but was I fun. Enjoyed she it was fun. I enjoyed the music. I had a good time, it. yeah. So you've done a lot of... done yeah, very cool. Well, I mean, kids coming by, I tap dance, and, you know, a lot of that. But when they think of you... They think of Jane. Of course, you made such an impression. Right. In the I mean, it's it, it, it a good made. thing because I get, you know, I still get the best tables when I walk in. People are afraid to say anything to me. They say, watch out, you're going to wind up in the East River. So it's, <laughs> it's a good. Moving a little. Last Sunday at Fordham University, Mario Cuomo and I did a seminar for the law students, and they showed The Godfather, and then a discussion about The Godfather, a movie that Mario appreciated technically thought it was brilliantly done, the music and everything, and hated the movie. Really? Because he stereo stereotyped Italians. The and stereotyped he fears Italian? that Italians have suffered as Americans from that movie. Oh, How do you I react to that? That's what he of, really feels it. Why don't you, yeah, well, are you going to join his parade? <laughs> or are you going to go to the <laughs> home with him? What are you talking about? <laughs> the, the truth of the matter is that if you analyze, I mean, obviously, when you do a picture about the mob, it's about the mob. And to make it entertaining, a movie, you know, you're not going to have them planting flowers. No, but he said okay. it glorifies murder. And we... No. I, I can see where he's coming from, kind of. I mean, the truth, on a serious note, the truth about the success of The Godfather has to solely do with Francis Coppola. I mean, I remember I was with Evans and all that when they were talking to Augusta Gravis and all of that. And I go, Francis, and, and the reason I say that is Francis is not a Brooklyn Italian. Francis is a Mediterranean Italian. His father was lead flautist for Tuscanini, you know? They come from music and art and food and wine. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the kids were the same way. They were in cutting rooms when they were four years. They don't know about any wise guy stuff. He's the further... But therein lies, therein lies the success because everything was done for the sake of family. You know the biggest question I got about horrors of, was that a real horse? 80 people got killed. They want to know if the horse was a real horse. Like they, <laughs> Nobody cared who died because everything was done 
You, you know what I mean? It was yeah, done it was for the sake of family. He beat, I'm sure he beat her. He did this to his sister. That's okay. This guy did this to his brother. You, you, you know what I mean? So yeah, of course. I argued that was that the success point. I argued, of the Godfather. can you see that it affected Italian? You know, people no, think Italian... not at all. I, no. As a matter of fact, I'm very... Friend, I mean, 90% of my friends are Italian at home. 95 probably. No, 90. Let's get this right. About 87 and a half. <laughs> okay. Okay. But they... they, they, um, they, they I've never heard that. There's a certain... And the Sopranos followed it? He didn't Well, like the Sopranos that is a little coarser. I mean, you know, The Godfather was still... Well, it was a, one of the, it's a great... No, great... no, no, I'm not saying... I mean, it, the, the Sopranos is a little coarser in its... In its it, the crimes were pettier. If you look at... Uh, pettier, is there such a word? Yeah, and we invented it. I just came up with it. But but it, they're, they're a petty thing. The, the, the Godfather was, it was more like you're talking about senators and, you know, they were all involved. What was it like? For you, a young guy, great role for you to work with Brando. As Pacino's, Pacino was scared to death, he told me. But that. we will. I mean, listen, anybody that tells you that, that was my age or, you know, or even a little older, they say that, that Brando didn't, you know, didn't mean anything or wasn't the most, you know, looked up to guy, you know, when we were working and acting. They're lying. You know, he was, he was the guy. So what was it like to work with him? Oh, he was a riot. I mean, yeah, I, I had more I fun with well. him. And anything I said, for some reason, he started laughing at me. In the middle of a scene, he just started laughing. I'd call him on the phone, and oh, he'd hang up. He just started laughing. So we had a great time. But the first, you know, when I first met him, it was, you know, I remember we had this, uh, Francis, for the first reading, we took this big restaurant up in the Bronx, had a big spread, all Italian food. It was like a dinner, and we read, you know. So Al, myself, Duval, and... <laughs> And Brandon with the head of the table, and all the way down the end of the table was Francis and every all the other characters, you know, and Sterling Hayden was all the way down. And Francis, you can see, we opened the book, we started to read, and all you'd hear, oh, son of a And I go, I don't know, Dad, you know. And Al go, you know, son of a And you can see Francis starting to lean forward. He couldn't hear a friggin' word for like the first half hour. I don't know. He that. found that. Role. And then all of a sudden, the Sterling Hayden had a line. Hey, why don't you go to Everybody just jump. One quick thing before we break. The death scene of Sonny. Yeah. How long did that take to shoot? That scene in the car. How long? A day. I mean... One day? Oh, my God. You can't do that over again. You know, how many times do you think you can do that? <laughs> well, I mean, to was... tell you the truth, I had 147 big squibs. Not like these sissy squibs they have today. I mean, they blow a hole in it, so they all have a sewn in a jacket and make sure they were... 147 on me, there were 5,000 all over the place. Now, how many times do you think you would shoot that? 147? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, now, I wouldn't have done it at all. I, I mean, it kind of scared me because the guy... You had to see these squibs. They were like like a brass casing. Do they hurt? They would blow a hole in your hand. Like, they sewed them into your jacket, they sewed them into the seats, they sewed them into the car, they blew the bondo out of the car. So you had to be... We had a choreograph where your hands were, and all that. Now the only reason I did it was because there were girls on the set. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have said. And if I'd have known they would have made two, I could have made money. I would have said, "No, screw you, Francis. I ain't dying right now." We'll be right back with the star of Back in the Game on ABC, <laughs> James Conn. We're back with James Conn. He stars in Back in the Game on ABC. In the next segment, we'll meet. His co-star, Maggie Lawson. We have some social media questions for you. Uh -huh. Social media? Yes. Explain K that to me first. J KJM1016 on Twitter. Do you tweet? KJM? Is, is yeah, that some kind of a lubricant? <laughs> what is that? The question is, are you a conservative, or do you think actors should keep their political views to themselves? Yes to both. Yes to both. You no, are conservative, I, but you uh, are No, I think they should keep... Yeah, there's nothing worse than an actor like talk. I mean, unless they have political science, they were political science majors and they know something. But most everybody that talks about it, I've tested a couple of put their heads on a scale and the needle doesn't move, okay? <laughs> Kathy, so, but, Kathy, I am, but I am, uh, at the present time, horses for courses, conservative. Kathy D. Foy 5 on Twitter wants to know, when did you first know that your son had talent? He stars in Hawaii Five O. When he was born. No, I, I, I didn't. I mean, he was a great ball player. I was getting him ready to play. He was... Baseball? Scott was, yeah, he was unbelievable. He was like the number one pick in the All-Star. guy named Andy Lopez, who was coach at Pepperdine. I gave him a scholarship like when he was 13, 14. So I thought I had front row seats at Yankee Stadium. 
And then he decided to become a lesbian. I mean, a thespian, <laughs> excuse me. And then, then he became a thespian. But he he went off and rapped when he was 16. He was doing oh, all that stuff. He's terrific on that show. You must be very proud. I'm very proud. He's a, he's a great writer, too. He writes plays. Uh, Dr. Dunk on Twitter wants to know, what was your most challenging role to date and why? I think it was a Kaiser, and it was four days old. I couldn't <laughs> Kaiser bite into it. It's a role for those of you I not from I could not into it. It was exhausting and I, terrible. Kaiser was my favorite role. Really? Yeah, look, the scenes See? on I knew that, Larry. I looked you yeah. up. <laughs> Debbie Kelly on Facebook. What was the best part about filming Las Vegas? Was there a best <laughs> part? Oh, sure. I mean, the cast was great. The girls were beautiful. So, I mean, it wasn't hard. It was like get, better than getting up looking at Brando every day, you know? I mean, they were beautiful. <laughs> Uh, all right, Joe and Kathy all Banfield. Right, you don't want me to. Uh, I let it just, go. These are little quick things. What, right? advi <laughs> what advice do you have for young and upcoming actors to maintain a long lasting career in the toughest business of them all? Acting. On a serious note, yeah. which I told my kid and my kids, you know, I used to say, like, acting isn't my life, you know, and people would think I don't care. That's not true. I want to be the best in the world. If I was a doctor, I want to be the But your family and your friends, have to be a, the, the most important thing because no matter what success you ch achieve, no matter what heights you achieve, inevitably, and this happened to everybody, there's a slide backwards, the degree of which changes from person to person. But the people who put all their eggs, so to speak, in that one basket, who live and die and breathe that crap, because that's what it is, inevitably, those people, when they, they hit that slide, they're the ones that hurt themselves. They drug out, they die, they depressed, they commit stupid crimes because there's too much it, there's too much importance self-important it's meaningless so it's you, not meaningless i mean you try you, just, you can only do what you can do right you never let it go to your head well i guess that's one way of putting it but don't don't make it your life i mean you got to look at what you have you know and not what you don't have let's play a game of if you only knew little quick things sure remember the first quick. girl you ever kissed oh boy you remember who it was maxine how old maxine asnes where were you I was, uh, Jesus, you're getting personal. Where were you? Oh, you mean just really a kiss like yeah, that? A kiss. I don't know, that had to happen, like a, a kiss. Oh, that's probably, I don't know, that was in camp somewhere. Well, who was Maxine Asnes? She was Max Asnes's, from Daughter? the, from, no, uh, niece. She was my girlfriend when I was 13. 13 it was the oh, first one that I had a little, you know, biggest regret. With, a little thing. Biggest regret. <sighs> you ever Big, turned down anything you regretted? Oh, many. Yeah? Yeah. Are you kidding? I, I was going to start a business with the studios. I almost had it done. If Jimmy likes it, don't put a dime in it. If he turns it down, put everything you got into it. I could have made a fortune. But I, 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 I turned down a lot of movies. I, you know, I mean, yeah. but I turned down some bad ones too. But, you know, it was, I've had... But having you, you don't have stuff, to name it, but has things. there been a movie when you said, why did I turn that down? Uh, no. no. I mean, I, I felt it, but I wouldn't say, you know, What's I, your I hidden, say I'm a schmuck. You I have mean, a hidden talent we don't know about. I have so many. Larry, you haven't got time. Favorite role of all time? Uh, I love doing Thief. What? Thief. Thief. Good. That was a good movie. Yeah, that was fun to do. And then there was fun movies like, you know, like this music. I love doing that thing with Barbara. That was a lot of fun to play that character, Billy Rose. Worst audition? Uh, the worst one was where I told the guy to screw up and walked out. That you walked good. out on your own? Oh, yeah. He said to me, the first thing he says, what's the best thing you've ever done? What kind of question is that? I just walked in to say hello. You didn't say hello. First, he said, you always wear your hair like that? I said, hello? What? <laughs> and then he said, what's the best thing you've ever done? Mer Mervyn Leroy, you remember him? Sure. And, and this poor little casting agent was sitting next to me. He says, Jimmy, you know, don't, you know, because I found out at an early age, if you say no to them people who play God, then they can't take that. Who is that punk to say no to me? Get him. I'll show him. I'll make him do this movie. So <laughs> I had that going. And he said, what's the best thing you've ever done? I said, I once ran 90 yards for a touchdown. The audition's over. Goodbye. And I <laughs> Worst, uh, favorite co-star. They co call me back to do it. Favorite co-star. Oh, I can't. I mean, Brando. I, I mean, Bobby Duvall and I, are. we've done five together. And we're, he's my closest friend. In this what movie. was your first impression of Los Angeles? Uh, cow pasture. That's years ago. Biggest regret. My biggest regret is probably this interview. <laughs> you know, I don't really get a laugh out of this. Do you have a favorite scene in The Godfather? One was actually cut in half, the one, but, uh, you know, that whole Bada Bing thing was a scene with Bobby and I. Uh, but I, I don't know, I like the scene with my daughter, my sister, when I came to see her. I don't know. How about when you beat up the brother? I like that very much. <laughs> Best advice you ever got? 
uh, I think from Mel Brooks, he told me to, not to run after a bus, there'll always be another. <laughs> and fi finally, something no one knows about you, James. Is there I'm, some? I'm, I'm, I'm a, a romantic, I'm a sweet little cookie cupcake. When we come back, Maggie Lawson will join us. <laughs> Don't chase the bus, there'll always be another. <laughs> from the 2,000-year-old man. You Don't go away. Oh, and don't ever I, eat fried food. Fried food. <laughs> Stay away from it, don't touch it. And, don't, I did that. I, I, and no I, Italian cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're back with James Conn, and now joined by Maggie Lawson, his co-star. She plays Terry Jr. in Back in the Game. How did you get the part? <laughs> um... Well, I had to I had to read with this one uh, a couple times, right? Didn't we do a couple times? I think I read once or twice, and then I read with you. Um, I had this sort of normal audition process, and he he already you were already cast, and then they had to test our chemistry. Which, uh -huh. uh, yeah. Did you like her right away? Yeah, you did. That's yeah. it. Yeah, okay. very much. Yeah, no, I came in. I didn't have to audition. I you know, know what I mean? No she clue. had to audition, but I there was two audition. girls left. I came in when there were two left. And she was one of the two. What is it like There's to no work contest. with him, Mag? <laughs> <laughs> Never a dull moment. <laughs> what is it like, really? Uh, it's been wonderful. Um, he's, I feel like I've learned so much from him. You know, TV is, is so fast. Sometimes you, you get into like this, this, it almost feels like a machine. Get it done, right? You can get it done, right? We got time, we got these locations, we gotta go, we gotta go. And sometimes you forget to just pause and think about a scene and the characters and where they're coming from and who they are and, Jimmy is so great in that, I call him Jimmy. Um, he's so great. Usually your holiness, but today, go ahead. <laughs> For this interview. Um, but he, we pause, we actually take, he, he comes on set and we sit down and we talk about the scene and it's really nice because you usually don't get the time to do that. And I love, I love how he works and I feel like I've learned so much from him and I feel like so much about our relationship sort of came out of you know, what had you done the time before to this? Do that. Um, I was going to ask him to run away with me, but she would turn me he down. He just anyway. grabbed my hand, like because I it, love you. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> every day. <laughs> I'm um, married. I'm married. I'm he's married. married. Yes, yes. And no. what have you? What had you done before, man? Um, I, I just well, I, Psych is still running, but I just came off of a show um, that's on USA. Uh, I did for the last eight seasons. So. What, what show? It's called Psych. Um, and uh, we still, this last season, uh, season eight still has to air out, but um, uh, that's See, sort of what I've been you're doing. You're riding for... a pretty good high then. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's been busy, but it's wonderful. I feel, I feel really lucky. How would you describe her talent? <laughs> How? Yeah, I mean, what does she very, bring to the screen? Hmm. She's very talented. She's, she's got uh, what we call inner life, which is the most important Meaning? product at General Electric. Seriously. I mean, you have to have something going on. It's not about words or anything. It's about behavior, and uh, I like her behavior. Where'd you grow up, Maggie? Huh? I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. A city with the prettiest women in the world. Wow, Louisville, thank Kentucky. you. Go to any Kentucky Derby, you see the women in Louisville. Oh, the Derby. oh that's where you went? That's, that's Kentucky it. to you, the, the Derby? Where what people else? are half covered with their hats and their how, how how would you know how good looking a blood was? You watch There's so much makeup. That's all we have, okay? No, no, no. He look, walking walking downtown. He went to the Derby and had you, a mint julep, and now he knows. You Kentucky. go into downtown well, Louisville, and they're gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You it's, went to downtown. Jimmy, you never went true. away from the Derby. He's so full of crap. Listen, I know him. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> he flew in. He went to the Derby, and then that's flew out. exactly right. And the boy are they Maggie, beautiful. Maggie, yes. Maggie, back to you. Back to me. Back to me. Are you enjoying this 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 role? Oh, so much. So because, much. other than Jimmy, why do you like it? Um, I like that we're making a show that I, I feel like, I feel like we're trying to find, um, I think, we're, I feel like we're trying to find the comedy in real moments versus a show that's based just around jokes. I feel like we have, we have relation, like real relationship stuff going on. Um, I love baseball. And, and so I feel, I feel like we're trying to do something, you know, a little more real and authentic. And, and let the comedy come from that. Did you and play softball, baseball as a kid? I played softball. Yeah, you I grew did? up playing softball. Yeah, I played until I was like 16. So, so. in this, you play a former star softball player, yes. right? Yes, yeah. I had to train a little bit, because baseball's different. I'm, I was a, I'm a pitcher, so I had to... You're doing I had it throwing to... underhand and overhand, yes. right? Yes, and I was a pitcher when I played softball, but it's, it's a whole different animal. Do you get to play on the show at all? Um, I, I have, a little bit. Not as much as I would like to. We do have a batting cage on set, which is really fun. But and are all the scenes, all the baseball scenes shot here? Mm-hmm. 
This is our field, right? Yeah, we built, we built the, this. We built this field. We, Jimmy and I. Jimmy and I. It's really, built the size field. of a softball. At night. Yes. It's not a baseball field. No, but we irrigated this whole thing. Everything. This is basically <laughs> our, serious. We did. Well, we my, not, 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 this was a field. Yeah. My yeah. kids. We made this baseball, baseball field, field. Yeah. and charged it to twentieth. Yeah. Yeah. But everybody thanks us. You see what I mean? <laughs> well, you did a great job. We're doing job. something really great for the community. Are you leaving this field now for the community? You're going to tear it all up, Jim. Well, that's a funny thing you should ask. Why? I, that's why I, asked I forgot why it was funny, but no. Because we had we we had to get a permit. I don't. I doesn't make sense to to lay all the pipes and the sprinkler. And the city said, okay, you can build it, but when you leave, you got to take that stuff out. No, you did they really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. You figure it out because you've been doing a drill like this for a long time. That? You can't give them the field. We can no, no. The field is theirs. I mean, we built it, but the whole system underneath here, you know, this, this whole sprinkler system to keep it green. You have they to take said that when, out. when 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 the show is dead. Which we don't know when that will happen. As a matter of fact, right in the middle of this interview, that can <laughs> Somebody could be walking over here right now. <laughs> Say, you're finished. Kaput, finished. But they want, they will have to take that stuff out. Isn't it? It was nice meeting, meeting you. you. Wonderful yeah. show, James. I'm so happy for you. Happy for your whole career. I'm happy career. for you, too. And your suspenders. Thank you, Jimmy. Jimmy Kahn and Maggie Lawson. She's Terry Jr. He's Terry Sr. The show is back in the game on ABC. We're in Beverly Hills on a beautiful field where they have to tear it up after they leave. Because <laughs> only in Beverly Hills could they think this. <laughs> only they need a permit now to tear it up. <laughs> you find me on Twitter at King's Things. Thanks for joining us. Isn't that insane? It's true. That's true.